Hello everybody! Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Today we're going to dive into the Skylights projection and whether there are any positioning pearls to help. Now I feel this projection gets casted away in the critiquing world compared to the AP and lateral knee projections. So let's see what we can find out together, shall we? The main indications we have for performing Skylines is usually to assess degree of away. We perform this in conjunction with the AP and lateral knee projections. Now the Skylines is mainly used to assess the degree of OA within the patellofemoral joint. However, a study by Bhattacharya, I'm guessing, et al. in 2006 suggested that the Skylines does not provide any statistical difference in sensitivity ruling in or specificity ruling out um, when compared to the lateral projection alone. That's just pretty interesting to note. Other indications that may justify a Skylines projection is assessing patellar subluxation or the displacement of the patella with knee flexion, patellar fractures and osteochondral defects, which is looking at the damage to articular cartilage and underlying cortical bone. Now positioning for Skylines do vary, and there are multiple techniques that can produce the same outcome. The main one I use is here called the Lawrence view where the patient is supine or sitting on the table with knee bent on the table and your tube is um, angling inferior or superior. The merchant's view is essentially a similar positioning. However, the patient's feet are dangling off the table and usually requires a special cassette holder. And the, uh, the tube is projecting super inferior for this one. Finally, the Houston view, which is a prone view, is performed with the patient prone, feet resting on the x-ray tube, and you usually have your cassette in the table bucky or on the table itself. Now, all these aim to produce the image here to the right. But what's interesting is a study performed by Bayer et al. in 2004, which suggested that the ideal knee flexion is 30 degrees. This was determined by assessing variations in measurements, such as patellofemoral angle, and other orthopedic measurements. Too little knee flexion and you may project the tibial tuberosity over the joint space too much and there may be variations in these measurements. Now what we have here is an example of one you might consider repeating. Your patellofemoral joint space isn't really open here and if you notice there is a slight bump in the middle. Now this is that tibial tuberosity. So for this case we would start by attempting to flex the patient's leg more. However, for this scenario, let's just consider the patella isolated in this case. Which way would you angle, more or less? Now determining which way to angle, we first need to determine which are the superior and inferior poles of the patella. There is not much online having clear information on this, so I had to dive a little deep in the rabbit hole to attempt to reason any methods. I want to start by delineating the two borders first. If you notice here, there is one border that does look slightly more radio-opaque or wide compared to the other border, but what's what? Now I used to think this kind of border difference was due to the density difference from distortion, where the cortical edge closer to the cassette will be magnified less and thus looking more sharp or more white. However, this didn't exactly work if I positioned the patient prone, because, because if the cassette is rested on the thigh, the superior border will be sharper but if the cassette is resting on the tibia, then the inferior border will be sharper. There had to be something a bit more consistent in defining these edges. All right, let's take a step back first. So let's look at the anatomy of a patella. What I found most interesting is this little part here. This is something called the articular cartilage, which is the pearly white stuff on the cadaver. It's usually about four to five millimeters in thickness. Um, and it looks white due to the avascular or lack of blood supply to this specific kind of region. Now the thing about the patella is that the apex or the inferior border is actually a non-articulating point of the bone, which means articular cartilage does not line this region. Now what I'm honing in about articular cartilage is mainly due to this structure. Now this is far more complicated than anything I've really read and I don't quite understand the other things. But what we have here is basically the composition of articular cartilage. Now this calcified zone at the bottom part here is one of my particular interests here. The function of this is to form a transition and anchor the deep zone of the collagen fibers of the cartilage to the cortical or subchondral bone here. Now as the name suggests, this zone is calcified and thus appears dense on imaging. 
This is due to the composition being of hydroxyapatite or calcium apatite, but either way, contains calcium, it will be more dense on x-rays compared to the rest of the collagen fibers and more water-based um, cartilage. So what's the verdict? Well, quite frankly, I don't know. There isn't something set in stone, but to me, I feel the evidence is quite sound. The white brim in this one border at the top may actually just be calcification from the calcified zone of the articular cartilage, and hence the superior border, which you can see here, which is kind of a little highlight there. So in this specific example, if I was positioned like my normal Lawrence view, I would angle my tube more to the ceiling to try to project the inferior border upwards superimposing over the superior part. Now, if you ever encountered this in practice and tried this method out, let me know how it went. I'm curious to know if these positioning pills actually help better understand anatomy on these regions and improve general radiographic technique. But thank you for listening, everyone. Have a good day.